Hello everyone. So I hope you can hear me. I really welcome all of you in this next panel discussion as we have heard the very nice uh, previous conversation and I can promise you that right now we are going to share stories as well. As we have learned the story is the most more, this is the most important thing what we can focusing on it because we can remember for it. I do I do hope so that you will remember all for all of the details from the next uh, conversation because our aim just to just to opening the next channel and talking about the ecosystem in a different way. We all know that what does it mean, the ecosystem? What I would like to get some answers and get some new methods that what does it mean, the culture of the innovation, the culture of the ecosystem? Why is it important? So I can promise you that I'm really welcome all of my partners here. I can see Marika already. I can see uh, hi, hi Mo, you are also here. And we are, I do hope so that Valentina and Jonathan with us as well. Say hello, please, if you are with us. Hello, Mo here. Hello, Mo, and hello, Morika. Uh, before, before we join, I would like to introduce myself in a couple of words. I am a TV anchor and um, communication expert, and I'm working with startups and new talents as well as a business developer. And um, our aim today, as I mentioned, that we will talk about the culture, the innovation culture, and uh, Going back to the previous slides and the previous conversation, I would really like to ask you just introduce yourself first, uh, in a very, maybe in a nice story and introduce yourself and your organization. Then we can put you somewhere on the map and we will still remember for all of you in the next decade. So Morika, would you be so nice and start the intro? everyone my name is marika beckford and i'm i'm from the uk i'm a digital skills officer working in local government so i connect industry to education to help build the bridge of the digital skills gap that we experience um so widely across across the globe um and one of the ways that i do that is by creating uh, very useful and valuable partnerships um, with local organizations um, and na national and international organizations so that these organizations can um, use their work uh, to shape the curriculum in the educational system, but also to impact communities um, locally and nationally um, to help those communities thrive in the digital skills um, digital skills se sector that they need to. So that's one of the one of the uh, things that I focus on. I also um, lead, a, um, I'm a tech leader for Silicon Canal, and this is a community um, initiative that helps to shape the ecosystem of startup organizations in the tech community in Birmingham. And I'm also a blogger on my digital uh, shapers website. So I blog about technology, innovation, and skills and career advice. Thank you very much, Marika. So Birmingham is already with us and I would call South Africa already because this is the global uh, conversation. I'm very happy that we can hear all of the aspect and everyone all over the world. So Jonathan, would you be so kind and introduce yourself and your organization as well? Thank you, Marta, and good day to everybody. Uh, I'm Jonathan Naidu, the Chief Executive Officer of Smart Exchange. Uh, Smart Exchange is a a business incubator that focuses on the media, information, communications, technology, electronics, and more recently, the arts sector. Well, the acronym is the MIC sector. Why does arts come in? Because of its relevance to the STEAM education, no longer the STEM. And even in all of our technology designing, we're pushing the arts agenda within that portfolio. I predominantly work with a lot of youth. Currently, we have 72 companies in the incubation ecosystem. And our incubator uh, has got an amazing replication model. We've got an urban incubator in the central business district of Durban. We've got an incubator in a small town called Port Shepston. And then we've replicated an incubator in a township. And then the fourth incubation is a rural incubator. So we're looking at the different economies whilst we do uh, replication of the ecosystem. And of course, we enjoy doing magic with the youth when we take the challenges and create fantastic opportunities. We are proud to have one of our companies 
listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange as well. That's it from Smart Exchange and Jonathan Nigel. Thank you, and it's wonderful what I, we have heard. And right now we are calling Chile, and uh, Valentina Aria is also with us. And please, Valentina, introduce yourself and your organization at the beginning. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Valentina Aria uh, from Chile, like Martha said. Um, I am a key account manager at Startup Chile, that is a public accelerator that started its journey 10 years ago. Um, so basically what we do is that we give funding and support uh, to tech-based global startups. So we give them funding, we give them guidance, mentorship, network, etc., in order to make them global business and succeed. And uh, personally, my role at, at Startup Chile is, is it just that is to connect them with all our resources and make this journey through our programs more smooth and help them basically in whatever that they need in order to succeed in their business. Thank you very much, Valentina, and Mo. Uh, finally, but uh, not the end, but please, please tell something about yourself as well, because you are really expert of this question, but I would like to ask you just to introduce yourself as well. Hi everybody, um, Mo, Mohamed Ba Mo, for those who know me, and I'm a technology addict, recovering addict, who is trying to be an ecosystem builder. And one of my passion is to help communities unlock their potential. This is why we're here. That's why the whole team of this conference is about helping uh, countries unlock their potential. And of course, I'm the senior coordinator of this topic at the ITU, uh, with the main goal to basically help countries foster more of their innovation to make sure that their young people can basically unlock the potential in their communities. Over to you, Marta. Thank you very much, Mo. Okay, we can start right now because it's very interesting for me that uh, we have been talking about the ecosystem and more than five, 10 years. Everyone knows it is important, it is crucial. But Mo, why do you, what do you think? Why is it important just to emphasize and highlight the culture as well? What is the, the extra benefit if we build not just the resources around us, but the culture of innovation or the culture of the ecosystem? Well, I, I think ecosystem is a sort of an abuse word. It's the same as innovation. And most of the time people confuse what it is. Uh, but basically it's very simple. When you think about innovation and then you can look at a standard definition, which just says it's a new product, new marketing methods, different forms of change. And this change is producing something that somebody wants in general. Now, if you are an innovator and you're trying to drive this product to market or this change to market, you need a group of stakeholders to help you. You need financiers maybe to provide you some kind of resources. And this could be what we call soft resources, which is not money, or it could be just hard money. You probably need the policymakers because you have to have policymakers help you with policy. You need academics because the whole world is really about a global war of talent. So your ecosystem will need that. And you need a whole bunch of other stakeholders. So the ecosystem is basically the stakeholders who creates this uh, symbiotic relationship and sustainable relationship between everybody and their environment. So that's the ecosystem. And this is why countries need it is super important because without this, you will not have the innovation that you need in the countries. I have promised to our audience that we're going to give them very good best practices. And I am really curious about those who are working in this kind of environment with this startups. How have you managed to do it? Marika, what is your opinion? What is the most important part in the in the cultural uh, aspect of the of the innovation or of the ecosystem building? I think that's a great question, Marta. Like when we break down what it means to innovate, and again, um, Mo mentioned this, we're often referring to the improvement of something that's already established, where new ideas and new solutions can be shaped to enhance a product or service, um, method or experience. And in my experience working within and building startups, I've witnessed and participated in the development of some successful and some not so successful stages. Hello. I don't know if we can hear you, Marika. It's a, it seems to be it's frozen. I don't know with the others. Can you, can we hear Marika, please? 
I think we no. lost, uh, for we, now. Oh, <laughs> anyway, okay, then then we go. We, we immediately jump to Chile. Don't worry. So because no. we can we can go to the next startup incubator part. So Valentina, what is your opinion? What is your experience about this question? Oh, um, I think that for us at the beginning, because we have been in, in this amazing journey for years, but it all started for us being at the end of the set. So at the beginning, without our program or our accelerator was created. In our country, nobody was really thinking or talking about technology, digital business, entrepreneurship, startup. So uh, we knew that we had to make something different in order to change the mindset and inspire people uh, to start thinking about it. And as, as we didn't have anyone here like uh, success case, we thought about bringing foreign uh, entrepreneurs in order to somehow inspire the local ecosystem. So that was like the first the first stage of, of how to create this culture. And then we started to worry about and uh, to take care about the community, how to make this uh, network and connection with all these entrepreneurs that came from all over the world in order to get them involved in the program. And also, so in the future, they could also help us. Like, for example, a lot of alumni from us became alumni. So that was a very good uh, resource that we were able to, to manage uh, with, uh, along these 10 years, that now is a very valuable asset for us as we have this very international and very high level network of mentors, alumni, and so we can offer that for the new generation as well. So I would say that it has to start with that change of mindset, at least in our ecosystem, and it also uh, started evolving into how to create a community in this uh, in this environment, how to uh, um, make co-creation, collaboration between private and public sector, because like I mentioned, we're a public institution. So we had to also make these private the companies involved into this uh, movement of startups and innovation. So, it was a, a very complex process in how to get them all these stakeholders involved and make them want to be part of, of the club, finally, of, of this innovation and startup ecosystem. Thank you, Valentina. Jonathan, do you have some similarity, like uh, involving the alumni people and create a new network and a wider network uh, around your startups? Is it a best practice for you as well, or is it totally different in your country or in your region? Um, it, it is similar, uh, but I'll maybe start off by um, uh, using an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. alone. But if you, want to, yeah, if you want to go far, we go together. Mm -hmm. And now that ties in with the uh, a brief note that Mo gave us. The whole thing is about collaboration. Hence, we want to go far together. So in building up the culture of innovation, the fundamental blocks will start with collaboration with a host of strategic partners. And I don't want to go into the level of detail. I think we know who the strategic partners are. And once you've got that right, with a powerful enabling environment from policy and government, then I think you've got the right ingredients for the culture of innovation. When we talk about culture, it means it's in your blood. Uh, that's how I interpret culture. It is something in your blood. So your, if your DNA is right, you can't go wrong. Now, in terms of our best practices out here, uh, we've used a multi-pronged approach uh, underpinning uh, excellent teaching and learnings. And to stimulate the innovation uh, ecosystem, uh, right now, by the way, I I'm just running a, a four-day series in the township on a co-created solution of a challenge that impacted in the township economies under COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So we responded to a challenge where the entire economy came to a standstill. And when the challenge came to us, we co-created a solution with 10 startup companies. Now, collaboration at even another level. And the guys are actually creating magic in the township, where we've now digitized an economy that was never ever digitized. Uh, areas that had no connectivity, 
We are using television white spaces to ensure that there's connectivity for the solutions to be rolled out. But I think in the interest of time, I'll stop there now, but the key points um, is collaboration, co-creation, and this partnership creates amazing magic. Thank you very much. And uh, Mo, may I ask you that we were talking about the collaboration, that cooperation and co-working, and uh, as Jonathan mentioned, that it's it's in our DNA in a normal way. But uh, what can we do with the with the with the uh, with the the question is the if the competitiveness. So sometimes it's a, it's a people are competing or companies competing to each other and maybe some of them on the same field. And how can you manage in these questions and in this part of the cooperation? Well, I think what you find is that in the beginning of every ecosystem uh, creation, and uh, you will find these competitions, this competitive spirit is there but quickly they will realize and they will go back to Jonathan's proverb, right? If you want to go fast, you go alone, but you're not going to go very far. And then they start switching the gear and they start finding ways to actually focus and have what we call the community consciousness. And the community consciousness is just what Jonathan brought up, which is to say, COVID came, we did a challenge. Now the whole community is co-creating around this one problem. And this is something that they would not do before. So they've suddenly they've raised community consciousness to the next level. But of course it does not stop there because all of this is sort of a story that feeds on itself. The more people see this sort of consciousness and the more they want to join this crowd and, and, and then the more the, you see the behavior or the, the DNA sort of thing that Jonathan talks about happen. And I think you're all familiar with, uh, with the habit loop. In the habit loop, if you want to change any habit, there is something called the cue the routine and the reward. Now, if you have several stakeholders and you want to change their behavior, you need to impact something. So you need to even impact the queue or you need to, in this case, COVID, so it's everybody's queue as well, or the reward, you know, but you need to change something. So in your community, you have to start thinking about those things. And then you have to start engaging stakeholders so they can find these cross collaboration issues. But I'll stop there, but the issue is a bit more complex in terms of how an ecosystem get formed. But I think uh, Valentina also brought this up when she talks about in the beginning what they did, but they, it's really all trying to create these habits and these sort of uh, events, communities, behaviors. Thank you very much. And hopefully, and I can see Morika also on the screen, so it means you rejoined us. Thank you very much. And uh, sorry, probably we just lost for it, lost you a little bit in this uh, internet, uh, the internet connection. But as I have seen that you have been listening us, and maybe you can comment this. We were just talking about the cooperation and about the um, um, competitiveness and how people can or how your companies can deal with it. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch the the end. I only caught the end of the conversation. All right. So then I, I just I just uh, I just wrap it up again. So we were just talking about that how important is that the, to co op to co uh, collaborate and co working together with the startups and with the whole community and uh, uh, the whole ecosystem. But my question was that what can you do with the with the with the competition, if maybe in your hub also similar um, startups there and similar companies there, is there any competition between them, or you can you can uh, go with them in a next level and force them or ask them, or they can understand the cooperation is much better than to be competitive. I, I think what you're trying to say. I think um, from my understanding. There, a level of competitiveness helps to push to the barriers of of, um, of of creativity. I think there is there is an there is a, a line that can be that can be pushed and um, and catalyze innovation because there is a level of competitiveness, healthy competitiveness. Um, so in that respect, I, I have seen that um, in 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 startup cultures, and I've seen it um, I've seen it work for for, for the good. And um, and when it does, it, it can really help to propel and and let and level up a, a level of, of excellence um, within startup culture in terms of um, how they uh, create new ideas and um, 
and how they how and their perspectives of things changing as well. And one more question to you, Marika, because uh, Valentina has mentioned one good practice, like involving the alumni also to the ecosystem, to the network. And do you have some good practices as well? How can we nurture the startup culture? culture? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I mentioned, I don't know whether you heard, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, what point I got cut off because I was talking a lot. <laughs> you can start <laughs> but, it one more time. <laughs> but I, 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 I have some key things that I think will help. And those, th those things are um, uh, a sense of collaboration. So where you, when you're collaborating, um, the goal is to, set an, in a, is to set the connection between varying strengths and skills and expertise and acknowledging those strengths and expertise sharing those to implement the ideas and I think sometimes when we are um, when we are embarking on collaborate on a collaborative process it, collaboration may require um, an external facilitator or someone to facilitate the suitable connections that are made in order for the the, the, the process of innovation to thrive and I think as well there needs to be a level of awareness and one of my um, I guess a key point of guidance would be um, recognizing that when decisions and plans need to pivot, need to stop or need to start over. And I think in that process of innovation, when we have that awareness of when that idea needs to change, needs to adapt, needs to start over, that's where we get um, uh we get a, a, a heightened level of, um, of activity. Um, and I think having that level of awareness is, is really important. The other thing that I think is really key is acknowledging the efforts, the energy, the time and the talent. So in your startup groups, with your stakeholders, with your partners, recognize and appreciate the, the outcomes of the entire process. I think that's really important um, to raise motivation, to raise um, energy levels and to help uh, the, the innovation process to, to continue to thrive and to be energized as well. Thank you, Valentina. Uh, are you agree? Because I have seen you were nodded uh, while, while listening, Marika. Is it similar to you that it's easier to energize or easier to motivate those who are in the community? Probably your answer is yes, but how can we see the differences between the collaboration and the common culture or if you stay alone? Um, I have a, like a particular case uh, that happened in one of my traditional portfolio that they were very light, I stressed out that all the things that they had to do and they were collapsing at the end of the day. So we had this meeting where we were one to one meeting and she was like, do you have like a, someone that you can recommend to me that could help me to deal with all this that is happening in my personal life, start that an office that is growing and, and I don't really have the capacity. So I, I really don't know what to do. And then uh, a few days later, we have these um, group of meetings and she exposed her, her problem and she realized that the other peers that were at the meeting, they, I, I faced the same situation a few weeks ago, for example, and she realized that she was not alone there, that there was more people going through the same situation that she was, but what she was doing is that she was staying home for work and we have coronavirus now, it has like a, a different um, context now, but back then we have this co-work space with all the entrepreneurs work together, share ideas, share their thoughts, uh, work together in, in finding synergies on how even their startup can make businesses. Um, so she realized that staying back home alone, she was suffering and she was not able to connect with the other entrepreneurs that had the same experience and that could help her or guide her how to deal with it. So I think another important thing, uh, like Marika said, is that when you uh, get together with other people that is in the same journey as you are, you find support there and you find this additional strength to go through all these things that maybe you didn't thought they were coming through this uh, stage. Because another important thing I think that is that you have to know that it's not gonna be that easy as you think maybe. Maybe you're going to fail, maybe you're going to have to pivot and uh, 
redesign yourself, redesign your solution, think again, and pivot again. So sometimes uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship, innovation, it sounds like this amazing journey and like it's all flashes and, <laughs> and amazing things. And it is, but it also has this other thing that it might involve a lot of stress or a lot of hard work and hard times also. So you need to have this community, this culture that is supporting you all the time and telling you that if you really believe in, in your in your startup, in your vision, um, just go for it and, and, and keep the passion. Yes, thank you very much. Jonathan, are you agree with it that all, not only the success, but the failure is also much easier to handle if we are in a community and if we are in a great culture and we can handle it better then? Absolutely. I mean, uh, what's important is never lose the opportunity of a crisis. Don't let a crisis go to waste. Take the learnings out of that crisis and turn it into a motivational success story but it'll be criminal to repeat the same crisis. I think that's important for us. Uh, so uh, there's obviously stages to reduce that in terms of your methodology as well. So uh, it's, it's called risk management of the entire project. So if, if your kind of scanning of the project is great, uh, your market research of it is smart, the chances of failure is minimized, but not guaranteed. I think that's important for us as well, uh, to make sure those safety nets are built in. And of course, if there's collaboration, uh, the chances of failure is even reduced further. But collaboration uh, also with good competitiveness is smart. Uh, I go back to the current project we're running out in the townships. I've got six marketing companies that are collaborating and competing in terms of marketing good news stories from the communities. Uh, but, but it's such a buzz out there. Each guy takes his client, uh, converts into an, an amazing story, pushes it onto the social media, and we all are benefiting out of it. So th that's the beauty as well. And the added advantage of the competitiveness, it makes you put your best foot forward. Thank you. And Mo, we have a question already. What if the market isn't big enough and many startups cannot coexist how can you adjust this situation if the market is not enough? Is the question. Well, <clears throat> I think if your market is not enough, if the market is not enough for startup, I, in, at the most startup, I mean, we have many successful countries who are very small, but they're really globalized. And what they're able to do is to reach out to markets and actually to make those connections not within uh, their countries, which they have probably done a good job, but so actually try to find networks for these communities that can help them support. And this actually goes both ways because it's not just about the market, but it's also about the resources that you may need in your ecosystem that you don't have, right? And 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 I think this is what, uh, you know, when you talk about developing your ecosystem, you don't have, I mean, I can cite you an example of a, really one of the wealthiest countries in the world, which is in Europe, I will not name the country. But when we did their analysis of their ecosystem, we realized that actually there wasn't really that much of an ecosystem because what was happening is other people, Silicon Valley was coming in in their ecosystem to utilize their resources. They weren't coming for the market. They were just coming in because they had a lot of fancy equipment investment that they can leverage right but but at the end they take that resource and then they come back and they sell the product so you have to be super smart about your ecosystem and how you connect it to other ecosystem so market is not an issue i mean uh, yes there's always good for your companies to get started but after that every tech company the minute it's born is global so you should think that you're competing globally you're not competing locally. If you're not ready for that, don't start your business. Yes, I think it's very important what you have mentioned and Valentina at the beginning already said it as you just brought uh, foreign partners as well as you brought foreign uh, uh, companies as well as you help those companies in your country who would like to go global, you would like to have them as well. Is it very typical that they need the global network as well? Like we do it right here already. This is also global networking and I'm really appreciate 
appreciate that you are joined to us as well, because I think this is the question what we are going to, to solve today. So, but go back to the question, Valentina, have you seen the, the benefit of this cooperation with other countries or with, uh, with globally? Uh, yeah, definitely. So um, when we started, the idea of, of the program was to use our, our country, that is a very small country, as a platform for the rest of the Latin American market. So what we wanted to do basically is that as we are a very reduced market, it's like a safe place for validation, for pilot, uh, piloting. So we wanted them to come to our country, inspire the people, and at the same time, they use our market in order to validate and also, as we have a lot of uh, very close neighbors, they can easily start to making businesses abroad in the region. So we have, we must have good connections with those markets in order to uh, guide them through and connect them with other important stakeholders in those ecosystems. So I think it, it is very important uh, to have this kind of network because you are able to open these doors for these startups that maybe if they go alone, they will have to uh, I spend a lot of resources and time and effort uh, to actually get uh, one meeting, for example. So when you have this kind of alliances, for example, uh, I think it's easier for, for them to have the opportunity of exploring the new market. And also, if you have, for example, in our case, as we have uh, companies and entrepreneurs that are from those markets as well and came to our country, they already have the perspective of people that came from those markets and they can also share how that market works, what is the culture back there, if what is the right way to make businesses, what is the right approach to talk to a company. For example, I was in a, in a meeting uh, this week and they were saying uh, that here in Latin America, if, if you fail and, and for example, your product is not ready and you go to a meeting with, with a client and you fail in that meeting, it's very hard giving our culture that you will be able to fail again to that but the, the guy was saying that maybe in another country that they are more um, more open to risk, maybe you will be have the chance to go back again and say, okay, I fixed it, and now this is my new product, and maybe you will be able to fail. But that depends on the culture, depends on the ecosystem that is in that in that market. So you also have to uh, be able to read that information and be prepared to that. And so you have the study for the different space. And I think when you have different stakeholders, companies, startups, or mentors, or people in your network that came from those different markets and, and countries, you have that first insights on how you should approach the different uh, operations if you want to start, uh, for example, an uh, internalization process. Yes, I think it's very important what you mentioned as well, because different cultures can react in a different way. And if we are in the big hub and we are able to use the benefits of, a, of a differences that we can go further, we can go together, uh, not faster, but but, but farther, uh, as, as we have learned already in the first second from, from Jonathan. Um, we have a question. I think it's a very interesting question. How do we explain the necessary necessity of the continuing, uh, continuing innovation to young generation? And I just wonder whether innovation is always good or not. It's a little bit kind of theoretical question or philosophical question, but what do you think, what is your opinion? Maybe Morika, you have some idea about the ongoing innovation. Is good or is it necessary? Marta, it's absolutely necessary. On, ongoing innovation is, is very necessary. And I think that um, in a world where we uh, are, um, the, the pace of technology and how we're how we're communicating and, and thinking up ideas is very rapid um the process of innovation is be becoming more natural i think because we are all becoming creators within our own niche and we're all communicating um uh, creatively through uh, various different mediums and platforms and i think these are sparking those um, sparking those ideas of innovation and I think what's happening as well is that every time we stumble upon a problem um, we are I think there's a culture and a generation of us that are more inclined to thinking of of solutions and ways around that and those sort of that and the connectivity between us now is um, is 
I, I believe or and I'm witnessing that it's happening much more naturally and rapidly for us to innovate. Um, and this is what excites me about innovation, because um, I believe this process of organic connection um, virtually is, is uh, helping to catalyze that. So absolutely, it is necessary. Okay, so I think I was absolutely sure that your answer will be like similar as I see you because you believe in this field, but this this question has arrived to us. Mo, I would like to ask you that uh, you did many research and you did many uh, study about the the resources and the outcome of the ecosystem um, working. So what can you see? Is it worse from economical way? Does it worse to cooperation and co-working together in an ecosystem at the end of the day uh, because I think it's also a very important question a very important economical question well I, I think uh, having an ecosystem is absolutely important and and having a functioning ecosystem is even more critical uh, sometimes what you see is that a lot of big money gets an ecosystem started but the innovation goes anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, the entrepreneurs get addicted to the money. I mean, in some countries, I won't name them, entrepreneurs get like 100,000 grants for what? I don't know. What do they work on? I don't know. Is it a real problem? I don't know. Is it worth their time? Probably not, but they're getting the money, so they'll go for it. Uh, so it's super important, and I want to build on what... Uh, uh, Jonathan and, and, and also Valentina were saying, in terms of the sustainability, uh, you have to think of the sustainability because you have to first make sure that there is an environment for these young people or these innovators and that they are focusing and solving a problem because if you are not working on a real problem, then most likely they're not going to get the collaboration of the community because if they're working on a problem of the community, People will buy that, right? Earlier, Nas, Nas talked about this. He says, well, I'm going to tell you a story. Please don't tell me the product, right? And we, we have gone through the pitches with our own innovation champions. And the first thing they want to do is, here is, I have this product. It's got this feature and that feature. I said, no, 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 no. What, what the heck is this product doing for me? Tell me, what is it solving for me? So you need to focus on the problem of the community. And from there, you can start mobilizing the resources. And this happens very naturally. Marika, I know in, in your environment, for example, you work a lot with private sector. Well, what does private sector has that cost them nothing that the innovators need? Plenty. Did the, the, the innovators or the entrepreneurs ever go to talk to the private sector? No. That's the kind of relationship I believe Marika is trying to broker. Because what you find is people have resources it doesn't cost them anything and they can offer it to the ecosystem, but we never facilitate this connection. And we know it's not about competition because the way you make a pie bigger is that if everybody has an ingredient, they come together and you make a bigger pie. So that, that's sort of the short answer to your uh, question. Yes, thank you very much. Jonathan, are you agree with it? So you are only dealing with real problems or can you, can you decide after an idea, this is a real, it's an answer for a real problem or not, or you, takes time just to you, you invite everyone and later on you can decide it or the the society or the ecosystem will decide it is it an answer for your problem or not uh, currently our methodology um, is kind of stereotyped in the sense that if we're not solving a real problem we're not going to touch it we've, we've learned from case studies the guy who innovated the supersonic aircraft broke the sound barrier. But what happened to the innovation? Not bold, because there's no sustainability. We can't afford the flight cost uh, to keep that aircraft in the air. Uh, it's, but that was certainly an innovation. So key to our innovations are solving a real problem, whether it's community-based or industry-based or, or local government-based. and. The second component is sustainability thereof. And the third component, it must lead to a serious start off. Of course, it links to sustainability with creating jobs and economic growth as well. So in summary, the problem has to be a real life problem that we're solving. 
And I would like to bring, thank you, and I would like to bring some one more aspect in it, because if we have a problem, if we have a solution, and uh, a little bit connecting to the previous uh, discussion about the storytelling, about how can we show it to the audience, what do you think, what is the role of the media in building a startup culture? So do you have any connection with the media? Are you able to show what you have? Are you able to show to the audience what's already with you? And are they open for it or not? Or how can you make it visible? Valentina, do you have some good practice maybe for it? Some best practice? Yeah, uh, I think that in our country, we have some new initiatives that are sharing the success stories of, of entrepreneurs in, in different levels. I mean, not, not only digital uh, businesses, but also traditional businesses. But it's, all, it's something that is spreading the voice about the entrepreneurship as a lab, as a really uh, real option of, 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 of working and not just something that it, like seems so far away. So I think that in that sense, it, it's good that they somehow, as it is a massive uh, media, they are making the entrepreneurship and innovation and, and that all those subjects more close to people. But also, like I mentioned before, I think that we don't have to um, step up in the in the sense that it's all the good things, but also that just share the complete messages that it has to have a lot of efforts. And there is a journey at the end of the day. It's not just to open a business and, and succeed the next day. So I think it, I, we have to be curious, uh, very, um, very uh, selective in how we say the message in order to somehow educate and inform the people in those subjects and not only sharing success stories and then people is just going to go or uh, open their businesses and then realize that it's not as, as it's not they that were easy. Told. Yes, it's not that easy exactly. as they thought. So, and, like... and, I, and, I, and it is worth, maybe probably it's, it's worth it, but I think you, just, you have to know that it's not just that, it's a, it's a journey at the end of the day and maybe you're going to fail a few times before you succeed. Uh, and and it, and in Startup Chile, we also have these um, media, uh, like the marketing area that has the journalists that helps entrepreneurs to make press releases. But we ha have this approach that is not just going to press because of going to press. You have to have something to share, a milestone, something important that you want to communicate. So, for example, if you make a very good business or how are you changing the industry of, for example, I don't know, the industry of food, how are you making a change? What, what is it that you want to communicate? Because it's not just going to make press release and make some noise in, in the social media just to let people know that you exist. It has to be something beyond your solution, beyond your startup. So it, it, it's uh, engaging for the audience. And not just saying, okay, this is my startup and this is what I do, and, and that's it. it. It has to be a, a more profound message. Uh, I, I, totally, to, I totally agree um, with you. Oh. I totally agree with you. I'm coming from the other side. And if you send me a press release, I put it in a, in a, in a trash because I, it, I do not care about it at all. I only care about the stories. I only care about the real stories, the real answers for the real questions. But I think it's also important just uh, how can you manage it? And if you have, I don't know, 100 starts up and if you have uh, 100 of projects, you are working on it. Um, what is the, the main message to your audience about these hubs and about this innovation question? If it's also crucial just to say then, what is your real message? Marika, what, what would be your message and how can you change the audience mindset about this question? Yeah, I think... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Marika. Thank you. Um, I just want to echo what... Uh, Valentina was talking about, um, as she mentioned um, a lot about the, sto the, the storytelling. But I also think that the role of media is, is shifting significantly in, in startup culture. You know, all these startups are becoming their own media organizations. Um, and I've, I've seen this, you know, um, because the media that's been created, the content that's been created from these startup organizations is becoming 
an asset. It's providing greater value to leverage their business goals, to build meaningful connections with their customers or services. And also it's it's another way to create another financial stream that can help to propel their business in different directions or, or, or to serve their communities wider. And I find it really interesting when startups successfully share the narrative of their business journey, when they start sharing their values and their missions, and they're building these um, communities uh, and these tribes and fans um, that are following their, their story because they believe in their value and their mission. And I've seen a great example of this by a UK founder called Sharmadine Reed. And she created a startup organization called War Nails. And it was, it was the way she utilized her social media to build the community. So what she did was she would post um, uh, social media posts of, of very highly polished nail varnishes and, and, and women with their, with their nails painted. And what she found was that she started inviting these women to pop up nail bars. And then she provided extra value to them because she listened and she she recognized that they wanted to they were it, the conversations that were happening in the nail bars was they women wanted to build their own businesses and their own startup communities. And then that spiraled into a larger network of business support for females. And that was that kind of the essence of that was that communication and building that network via her social, via her social media platform. Um, and I believe that, you know, another reason why media is important um, in startup culture is because one, it's significantly cheaper, it's measurable, <laughs> it's insightful, and it helps startup organizations capture the demographics and the in interests um, of their audiences. And when they do that, that's when the startup is able to um, use the analytics that they've found from, from uh, the, the communications that they've shared, and they're able to use that to inform very vital decisions that they make next. So I'm always delighted to see a startup embrace media. I'm always delighted to see them mix different disciplines and different platforms to communicate creatively with their audience. Thank you. Jonathan, are you agree with it? So are you using this tool as well? Because I think it's very crucial. But what we have experienced in the last 10 years is totally has changed. So we have many platforms already. The media is not just about the social media, not just the state media. We have all the platforms around us and if you are able to use the right one and if you are able to put your questions or your product on the right one, maybe you can build this ecosystem in a wider way. Um, we are blessed in the sense that we've seen the writing on the wall from the inception stages. Hence, I introduced myself by saying we're a M-I-C-T-E-A incubator. Media mm -hmm. is part of the incubation program. It plays a pivotal role in the SEA Digitizer project that we're running out in townships. Um, the audio and visual media is playing an amazing role We've got a digital, three digital radio stations that are pushing the good news stories as well. The added advantage of media uh, is that uh, it now makes your potential customers embrace the product or service that you're bringing to them. It also alerts industry players in terms of being ready for the new disruption. So it's giving you an early warning signal, shape up or ship out because my innovation is coming. So that's the other beauties of having a powerful media campaign linked to any aspect of innovation. My closing remark on that, media and innovation goes hand in glove. I have seen that Morika was nodded so 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 highly because you are you agree actually I can see because uh, the disruption and you can checking the or you can testing your your product on the market is it really crucial? Most definitely, it, it helps us to validate the, the 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 product or the service that that you're that you're preparing to your audience and and having that validation enables you to 
work on whether that whether you're going to continue that process or whether you're going to um, change it and um, it's that element of awareness that I mentioned earlier in the innovation phases that I that I think is important so absolutely um, I'm, I'm, I'm always inspired when I see um, startup cultures really embracing uh, media at a very early stage in their process. Thank you. Mo, we have a couple of minutes left and I would really ask you just to summarize that what is the, the for those who are listening us, for those who are watching us, and maybe they would like to improve the culture of the ecosystem. What do they, what should they do? Uh, what would be your recommendation to make it better or improve it? Well, that's a really tough one. I think that, <laughs> <laughs> but before, right. before I answer that, I just want to point to another uh, aspect of the media. And I, and I agree that media is reorganizing itself and startups have to utilize this to survive. But there is a very important part of media that we should not overlook, uh, which is basically the fact that media tells success stories of entrepreneurs, which inspire other entrepreneurs to join those digital communities. So that aspect, I think, is super important for any ecosystem. Now, back to your question, what should any ecosystem really do to think about building their culture? I think the first thing is to really do an honest assessment of your ecosystem, the stakeholders, and how every one of them is contributing to the journey, right, towards this vibrancy, etc. At ITU, we use a tool to do this. It's called the Ecosystem Maturity Map, where you can basically color code 30 different indicators and tell you how you look, right? But it does not tell you how to get there. For you to understand how to get there, you have to basically uh, do a bit more, but you have to think about, okay, what at which stage you're in, you have to think about what is the most critical aspect you need to fix. But out of all of the aspects, I think building digital communities and fostering the digital communities is super important because that's what's going to feel. It's the community that will feel this positive feedback loop. And then you'll be able to actually develop into this remarkable ecosystem. It's what will attract uh, policymakers to enact new laws. It's what will attract uh, uh, private sector to take notice to say, well, these guys are small fish today, but they're going to become a big fish if we don't pay attention, right? But that that's the kind of things I think I would recommend. Jonathan, are you agree with it? If you can if you have any wish for the next 10 years and some form wish for the other community, co communities, what would be your uh, best practice or wish for them? Uh, I would like to add one more component mm -hmm. uh, to the maturing community stages of development. Uh, when you pass the construction stage, your consciousness, your collaboration, and when you meet or reach the vibrant stage of your choice, I'm saying there's one more stage. And the stage is that of the philanthropic stage. It's a stage where we must be sharing our generosity to others. Then I think we've got a lovely mature system. Thank you. I think it's very interesting and wonderful what you said. <laughs> and the same question to Valentina. Um, in my case, for my for, for the ecosystem where I'm right now, I I wish that this becomes somehow like a, a mission or a vision of of a country level. Um, as as we are a public institution, it it, it started with us moving all these these things. Uh, forward and, and inviting the different stakeholders, but you always need, uh, for example, collaboration from other institutions in the public sector that helps us smooth the process for those that are coming to our country. So uh, my, my ideal or my dream will be that this ecosystem and, and innovation and digital businesses and will be part of a bigger vision of, uh, as a country where you involve education at, at, at very initial levels. So in that way, I think that everybody is going to be somehow, like Jonathan said at the beginning, uh, we will have it in, in our DNA. So I think that is what the stage we are right now in which we already have an ecosystem, but I think that we are in the stage of making it a vision of a country. I think it's very important, and uh, thank you for for mentioning this one as well. And the 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 where we are right 
where, where we are going right now, this is the digitalization. It helps this connection probably, and it helps this kind of uh, knowledge sharing between us and between the, the different uh, networks. And uh, Morika, what would be your wish for the next 10 years? Uh, where would you like to see your organization or your uh, ecosystem in 10 years? Or maybe five is enough for me, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, I'm very mindful about the automation of uh, jobs and I'm very, um, uh, I, I understand that artificial intelligence um, can do can do a lot of things and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it can, but I also don't want to underestimate how valuable it is um, to cultivate creativity in an authentic and, and organic way. And I think that's really important because it sets us as human beings um, and, and gives a lot of value to us as humans is, is, the, is our ability to create um, and, and to do that in a very authentic way, which, which, um, which is an advantage to us as humans because artificial intelligence can, can, can perhaps replicate that or, or learn that but not to the extent that that we can do this naturally and and um, through sparks of inspiration that come through us so um, I think there has to be a real human level of not underestimating how valuable um, authentic creativity is to the innovation process and I share more about this on my um, on my blog page and I'm, I welcome anybody who's interested in, in hearing more about that or sharing those sort of insights to uh, visit my blog page on digitalshapers.co.uk. I hope all your wishes will come true and uh, we will live in a better and more connected area and uh, uh, we can see together the success of the of your of your companies and of your startups and we can help each other in the failures as well because I think it's also very important just to just to be behind each other and help those people who need it and, and encourage them for the next level. And thank you very much for participating in this conversation or in this discussion. And just going going forward, I would like really uh, invite everyone to join to the network session because this is absolutely just joined and connected with our last part or last couple of minutes. Uh, the next session will be the network session with Jan Keck, this is a meaningful conversation and stories, magical human moments. So please join to him and enjoy it and try to bear the stronger community. And I'm really happy to be the part of it, maybe just for one an hour and maybe later on for a longer time. But thank you very much and enjoy the day. And thank you. We hope we can give you for the audience very interesting and very good stories as well. You can use it in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.